Welcome back to Donkey Kong Country. We're thankfully past the potential video screw up snow. At least for for the most part. I think there's a few. Or maybe it was two with that had the uh, haze effect in a couple levels. You know, 90s CGO, G CGI caves and ice caves always looked like really cool and really bad at the same time. And I'm seeing a lot of that in the in the snow background well, the map there. With your use of 90s terminology, is bad also good? Depends on what show you're talking about. Like, you know, it could be Reboot, which had a weird sort of charm, or it could be fucking Quest World and Johnny Quest, which just looked terrible. Um, no, no, because nowadays that's so bad. It's no, good. it's not. It's But back then, bad, bad was good. You can laugh at Reboot like, today, hey, but... Man. That's a bad man. But like, uh, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. And I don't. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I, I'm using the dictionary definition of the word bad. Okay. I, I don't spell the word fat with f a t a p h a t. I spell it <laughs> fat with an f a t. God, Lewis, you're so old. Because I know I'm overweight and I just don't give a fuck. Okay. Uh. That's that fuck, by the way, is also. I'm the only the one out of the three of us who knows where that quote comes from, and I'm sad. <laughs> it is a relevant quote, though, because it's from Vampire the Masquerade, and we're getting a sequel to that against all odds. And all anyone can talk about is the vague as hell uh, red flags that things are getting political. And I'm like, come on. No, no, it's video games, Lewis. Video games can't be political. I'm just looking. I'm just looking forward to the return of Foxy Boxes. <sighs> How, 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 what kind of world do we live in, though, where Vampire the Masquerade gets a sequel for F Zero? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> You're welcome. But still, the question. Well, is you know, it's it's a weird year to be alive as a gamer. Remake of Resident Evil Two, Devil May Cry Five, finally happening. We just got Streets of Rage Four gameplay right before recording this part, and I'm like, mm, looks so stylish. I can't wait for this. <laughs> also, Link's Awakening. Oh yes, the Link's Awakening remake. Uh, it's just the year for Lewis. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm beside myself to be able to play my favorite 2D Zelda game on a screen that isn't the size of a trading card's little window for whatever you're looking at on the card. So Not imagine, even the trading card, but just like, the little window with the picture in it. You can imagine, like, just after finishing this recording ten years ago, we ask ourselves, "I wonder what we'd be ten years from now." Hi, welcome to the Dark Country <laughs> to Revisit. <a> commentary. <laughs> where we talk about where we talk about games we played twenty years ago, and are still playing, but new. <laughs> and I played Link's Awakening because I saw that it had that that it was a Legend of Zelda game, and I had been salivating over Ocarina of Time and magazines for a while. I was so disappointed when I got that game and its instruction manual and saw that Link wasn't half as cool or badass looking as he was in Ocarina of Time as an adult. But, you know, I got used to it. Because <laughs> the game was just that fun. Although, weirdly, I can't for the life of me get into the Oracle games and I have no idea why. It's just something about it puts me off. <laughs> There's a lot of trial and error, er, er, error in the Oracle games. I haven't gotten far enough in to get to any trial and error. I just, you know... It's, it's mostly kind of guessing the whole season. You know what's funny, though? Things. In the context of Zelda, I can't tell if you're talking about trial and error or trial and error from Zelda 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, see, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it makes you laugh. You know, that's probably like a, a horrendous um, name mistranslation, like alias Most from Resident likely. Evil. Uh, no, it's actually it's not. not. No, it's not. <laughs> no, because there is oh, yeah, another Bagu. character that that is yeah, which is Bug. It's intentional. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, because like there's a character in Resident Evil that's called Alias, but it was supposed to be Elias, as in the name from the Bible, the but. It, yeah. It's Alias. It's like his name is Alias. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and like the novel kept it too. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> Alias? You're. <laughs> That's just probably for consistency. Y y your mother named you that. <laughs> your father named you that. Your mother and father agreed to name you that. That would be the worst thing. <laughs> no, my mother named me Alias. My father na was going to name me person with a separate name. <laughs> 
man. Oh, uh, how are you playing this game? Like, Super what, Nintendo what, Classic. Uh, Super Nintendo Classic. Okay, okay. So it is based off like a, a re-released yeah. uh, version of the game. So because I, I wasn't sure. Just if, um, easier to record than setting up the Super Nintendo and getting on. Well, the that too. Working, so. uh, also, Torchlight Trouble doesn't give you a fucking CD. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Super Nintendo can do S video, apparently. The uh, yes. Using yes. the same S video cable that the N64 and the GameCube use, which is crazy. Yeah, for a while that cable was universal for Nintendo. three consoles. Yeah, it was. It was it's it's uh, amazing. It's good. Also, super convenient. I don't have to yeah. unplug anything from the back of my big ass television. I can just take the wire out of the back of one system and stick it in another. It's 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 wonderful. I don't need a fucking splitter or a switch box or anything. Ah. But then again, it's S video, which makes it a pain in the ass to use at all. Yeah. I have one television that can that 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 can use it, and I'm deathly afraid of replacing that television because I just know I'm never going to find another television that still has this video com com uh, compatibility again. Well, without paying a pretty yeah. penny. So, uh, show of hands, uh, this is totally just not Ewok Village? It's Ewok Village. <laughs> <laughs> not that Ewok Village was particularly original imagery to begin with. Like, you know. Yeah. Houses and trees, town made of them. They're in fucking everything. I think, like, Champions of Norath starts with that. Like, it's the first fucking level of the game. Maybe the developers were a fan of Star Wars. Probably. I reused boss. Although, what was, like, who was or what was rare at this point in time? Besides getting, like, a few LJN games back in the NES days. Uh, well, battle toads, but oh, they did. Was that rare? Yeah, they did. They did battle toads, huh? Eh. The only battle toads game I ever played was uh, on the Genesis, Battle Toads and Double Dragon crossover. It, oh god, I remember that for the Super Nintendo. It was okay. I, I, -ish. I didn't beat that. I never beat it either, but it it was fun. Like it played smooth and all. I don't necessarily. Um, I guess I'll. Sorry, go on. I don't necessarily know if it was like well balanced by the standards of that kind of game, though, so I couldn't tell you what its quality was like. I guess um, uh, what was the Crash Three level named after a rare game? Rings of Power. Rings of Power. Yeah. So I guess Rare did that. Well, no, it wasn't a rare oh, game. Sorry, that was Naughty that Dog. was named after a uh, lot of dogs. Naughty yeah. Dog did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. I don't know much about Rare, to be honest. I never played many of their games back in the day. Like, I... Yeah, th I, I, I'm thinking back, and I think this is, like, technically my first ever Rare game. Yeah, it was for most, the vast if, majority if, of people. If they made something else that I played that was released at an earlier time frame, I don't remember it. Like, the, the only Rare game I played any significant amount of is Perfect Dark Zero, which is not great. I mean... That game went through development hell. It was also an early 360 era FPS, and those games are fraught with issues. But you know, it's at least better than a lot of the the shooters that were around uh, uh, that were that that were that would flood the market uh, around and after that time. But uh, yeah, it has issues, and. Uh, it didn't do much to make me want to play more stuff by Rare. I'll put put it that way. Well, Rare just kind of transformed, though, throughout, like, I want to say starting with the late 90s, leading into the early 2000s. Like, it was, it's not exactly the same development team as you it's would definitely come not, to know no. as. They sort yeah. of had I mean, a golden age where they were churning out a lot of really good games, didn't they? For Super Nintendo and N64, that's kind of about it. Yeah. Because re really, if you go in like the rare replay collection, you're playing it for Banjo Kazooie, to and Conquer, and that's basically Perfect it. Dark as well. Perfect Dark was yeah. basically we want to make a sequel to Golden Eye, but we'll, but we can't make Golden. We can't make Golden Eye, so let's just take all the gameplay stuff we made for that and improve it here. So Perfect Dark is basically Golden Eye, but better. Also with a story worth a damn, because yeah. But what I, I like, uh, I like. Uh, Big arm, Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> that game's graphics are golden. You will never convince me otherwise. Golden eye. Hey. 
<laughs> I like how the most culturally significant impact of GoldenEye was the multiplayer mode that was thrown in because the developers were like, why the fuck not? Uh, One guy made it, yeah. Yeah, it was just a, it was just a stupid extra. <laughs> and that, it, he, that he made just because. <laughs> and it became the main feature. <laughs> Man, it's like history repeats itself. Like Fortnite, you know? Man. In what sense of the word were you talking about? They, they they had this big, like, conceptually ambitious single player mode, but the game became famous for oh, its multiplayer. Okay. It's it's the same sort of effect going on there. Only because, you know, the, the, uh, single player the, was unfinished. The Battle Royale was and free. The Battle Royale was, it was free. unfinished, and Battle Royale was yeah. free. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's it's strange how stuff like that can sometimes happen. That's not to say that the single player in GoldenEye was bad, and it certainly had potential. Perfect Dark did a lot with that potential. But uh, I still say that single player is still pretty good. Yeah, it's hard to. Well, the single player in GoldenEye was just following the movie. Yeah, more yeah. or less. The it's hard to recommend going back to GoldenEye single player or or um, Perfect Dark these days because the way they handled console FPS gameplay back then was so strange. <laughs> It's like... Now, what, what, what about the... Um, GoldenEye got remade for the Wii, didn't it? Sort of. There was oh, a remake. It's a, it's a, it's a, a pseudo-sequel. Okay. It's a pseudo-sequel reimagining kind of thing. You know, it wasn't... Particular, it wasn't particularly spectacular. Although I would submit that people who thought it was going to be particularly spectacular were kind of holding the original game up to some really rose-tinted goggles, because you know there wasn't a whole lot in the original. <laughs> uh, to like, yeah, because GoldenEye helped pioneer FPSs on consoles. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it one of the best even today. Yeah, it's, it's like it's you got know, the fundamentals, and it's got like a really yeah. bare bones local multiplayer thing going on that was really fun for the time. But then again, we all thought mines all over the warehouse. Yeah, but then again, like <laughs> everywhere. Then again, back then we were like all too happy to 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 get Bomberman sixty four and just focus on the really small, simple as hell Bomberman multiplayer and ignore the story mode and consider that a worthwhile package. So, standards for, I guess, monetary value in a multiplayer game have definitely changed since then. Uh, it was a different time. Of course, we all had to play our multiplayer on the sofa back then. Yeah. Which meant... Hopefully, hopefully you had siblings who didn't suck or had friends who could come over regularly. You know, you had a ghost of a chance of playing Street Fighter and not being matched up against someone who's, like, miles better than you. Uh, yeah, you, you go, uh, go to the arcade, go to grade school. <laughs> oh, great, the teenagers are playing. You're going to get your ass kicked. <laughs> I, You know, I, I can't even relate to that because I didn't have any arcades within walking distance or biking distance or any kind of convenient distance for a kid. Uh, there was always an arcade in a, in a corner store for me. The only arcade I had was like at the skating rink that I used to work at, which back then had Marvel vs. Capcom in it, which is fun. But there weren't very many people playing, so you're usually just playing the arcade mode. Uh, it was usually corner stores for me and movie theaters. Yeah, movie theaters were a big one. We had one in my mall. Like a, it's a pretty decently sized Man, arcade. Imagine having parents who are patient enough to actually show up early and let you play on the arcade machine rather than showing up five minutes before the start of a movie and rushing right into the theater. It was really rare. You're, you're right. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> and then, like, there were. The well, no, we always, we always did that because most places had a Miss Pac Man Galaga combination, and my mom loves Miss Pac Man, so. There were. The Although, you know, that said, I feel. Kids and teenagers of today have it better because now previews go on for half a goddamn hour and it's trailers we've already seen. Yeah, on but YouTube. then movie theaters yeah. don't have arcade machines, so fuck it. Uh, yeah, some do. No, they do. They're, they're still I have do. not some seen a single arcade machine in a theater that was more advanced than actual Pac-Man. Um, in fact, that's like 
all the arcade, all the surviving arcade machines that I, I'm convinced all the sur- surviving arcade machines in New Jersey State right now are just like the old Pac-Man machines that have only lasted so long because those goddamn things are immortal. Um, and that's all I that's all I ever see. Like sometimes a diner has Pac-Man in the in, in the front, a little distraction for the kids while you wait for your food, you know. And that is like an unchanging feature of my local area is diners that have a Pac-Man game in the front. Well, I feel like the the, 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 the popular thing now, or on, on, I don't know how popular it would be, but barcades, basically. Eh? Yeah, barcades. You, you go to a bar, and they have like a shitload Arcade of uh, arcades just for you to... I haven't seen a single one of those, but fun. then I don't go to bars because I don't drink, so that's probably on right, me. Right. The, um... The the uh, the only things that I've seen that pass for like actual arcade businesses in modern times are like places that have consoles and tel- television set up so you can play games on their systems if you don't yeah. have one of your own. But that's the thing. See, that's what I mean. It's like like bar like the the good barcades have that just as much as well. You know, only you know you can just you can sit down and have a drink as yeah. well. Well, I mean. Or you go to a dedicated place like Dave and Buster's or some other shit. Yeah, I mean, you can get drunk and play video games and suck horribly at it, or you can just play a video game and have fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a game that even if you're inebriated, you can oh, probably yeah, play. Oh, yeah, you know, like just it, it's hand. it's probably a weird thing that, like, if you were to play a driving video game, you could drive drunk better than you could actually drive drunk. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. DUI Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you and the SGB guys have not tried that one year. No, no, we did on the. Uh, well, okay, more accurately, they did the year oh, we yeah. played Mario Party three. Uh, we played Mario Party three one one year for Drunk Mario Party, and you know Mario Party three's boards goes on for two days, <laughs> and uh, I got absolutely hammered and I passed out. And while I was passed out on the floor, for the record, <laughs> they recorded Mario Kart. <laughs> Uh, and we call the DUI Mario Kart. <laughs> Raise awareness for driving under the influence of playing a virtual racing game. Uh. Hey, better on a virtual road than on an actual road. So <laughs> you probably <laughs> drive kind of the better we were... in a video game, is what I was yeah. saying. Like, I don't think the yeah, alcohol probably. messes with your ability to drive in a straight line in a video game quite as badly as it does when you're in a car. Can you play Desert Bus Drunk? <laughs> probably. Oh, uh, I mean... <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wasn't sure what you'd happened. You'd probably fall asleep a little faster, which is the main source of challenge in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, you play Desert you play desert Bus, and I'm just picturing someone going all in and cosplaying the trucker from the Resi 2 remake intro. Hamburger and all, just, you know... <laughs> <laughs> have a hamburger on on the table in front of you. No, put it on a box so it's raised up at the precise elevation a dashboard hamburger would be at, so you can munch on it as you drive and just have a radio next to you. <laughs> unfortunately, dashboard hamburger only comes with the deluxe edition of Desert oh. Bus, so you got to pay a little extra. I think that always the way. Yeah, it is. By the be by the additional cheddar cheese DLC pack. Oh, not the cheddar cheese. A yeah, second minecart level to get on top of for the game. I'm surprised they this kind of became a staple for the series, considering it's only in two levels here, and you, they're not terribly interesting. You know, these minecart jumping situations always give me Vietnam War flashbacks to one of the first Genesis games I ever owned when I was like five. It was the uh, Pac-Man 2: The New Adventures. Oh, I have that on Super Nintendo. You know what you had to do to make Pac-Man jump out of the minecart in that game? You had to shoot him with a slingshot. So it was always, always delayed. I never got that far in the game. Uh, it's only four stages long. It's actually not very long. But I, the game is... I think I got past level one two or three times in my youth. The game is so filled to the brim with trial and error point and click adventure game bullshit that, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a trip. Also, like... Yeah, it's it's a game I will never do for the channel. The Ghost Witch. <laughs> Even though I own the game. Where did the Ghost Witch come from? <laughs> I mean, I didn't know Pac-Man had lore this this involved. There's a witch that it can the ghosts? Where did, the, where did we get that? 
Uh, and I remember the first level, the first of the four levels, the first quarter of the game is just like you finding on milk. Epic adventure to find actual milk for, for your baby, baby, and you wind up getting it from the goddamn cow next door. I don't think that's safe. Feeding your baby cow's milk direct from the udder? I'm pretty sure that's unsafe. Yeah. Pac-Man, what are you doing? But, you know, I, I understand why it has to come from a different animal, because it doesn't really look like Miss Pac-Man has anywhere to produce milk, since she's just a head with legs. Oh, there's so. porn for it somewhere. Pretty sure. Oh, I'm just saying, uh, maybe that's what pack babies have evolved to do. Steal milk maybe, from other know, species. Know, maybe, yeah, because they have to. Miss Pac-Man doesn't breastfeed. So. Uh, whoa, how did... How did we get here? <laughs> how did any of how did any of us get here? Mine carts reminded me of mine carts in Pac-Man 2. Pac-Man 2 is such a such a weird game though. Like when you when you 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 store power pellets and slingshot them out into the stage, and if you do, Pac-Man zooms across the screen to eat one and turns into Super Pac-Man, complete with a cape and mask, <laughs> and he flies around the screen killing the ghosts. It's a good way to get him out of trouble, though, because he's invincible when he's Super Pac-Man. But the game has a final boss, where you actually have to keep yourself as Super Pac-Man long enough to fulfill the conditions of beating the boss. I don't remember exactly what. I think it's like the one part in the game where the ghosts you eat come back shortly afterward to keep harassing you. So it becomes classic Pac-Man. No. Well, if you subtract the maze and all the little pellets... And, and being able to move yourself. And being able to move yourself and the joyful simplicity of playing an actual video game. Yeah, sure. An actual video game. <laughs> I was very, very... I, like, I knew enough about Pac-Man back then because my dad was an Atari kid who to, to look at Pac-Man 2 and think at that age, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I probably didn't use the F word in my thoughts because I didn't know what it was, but, you know, that was the general feeling I had. You ever stop to just look at the backgrounds of these video games, especially in this scenario's case? Because you know, we're trying to get our bananas back from King K. Rules. Like, this ain't enough? I, no, all I know all the is, bananas. like, Holy there's, shit. A, there's, a, there's a hell of a lot of yellow dildo, dildos in this room. I... <laughs> well, they look like they're made of rubber or plastic. They don't. They sure don't look like bananas. <laughs> I mean, and like in the front, uh, the banana bundles that are supposed to be connected at the top just look like they melt into each other near the top. So it's like a weird, deformed yellow hand. Uh, yeah, they've probably been in this moist cave system for a very long time. They might have. Maybe they have melted. They're gonna blow my eyes, and they're probably yellow mop heads. Well, if that if that's the case, why do we want these bananas back? Because Donkey Kong's an idiot. 